Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, what are the most valuable languages to learn as a software developer? So let's get into it. I really hate this question. I really dislike it. And it's not because it's not a great question, because it's a really good question, but it's the sort of question that would put me in the hot seat because now I need to express an opinion about something there where I cannot possibly be right. There's no way for me to say anything about this without pissing somebody off or making somebody go come on my comment section and tell me that oh Frederick you forgot about that language and what about that language and how how can you possibly claim this and not that and guys I'm fully aware of that there are so many aspects to these sorts of it's a it's a frustrating thing because some people uh, who have watched quite a few of my videos and actually know me understand that, uh, hopefully you start to understand that I'm kind of open to a lot of these things. I am fully aware of that there are many, many, many perspectives to the same thing. But it's very hard to within a few minutes, and especially if somebody comes here for the first video, they've never been to my little sh hobby channel here and they just kind of get to this video. You don't know how many times I've been called an idiot for per a, pe a person just basically coming to my channel watching one video assuming that they know exactly what type of person I am and how I think and like all that stuff and just basically calling me an idiot because out of context what I say seems kind of weird but I will try I will try my best to give you the perspectives that I have on this anyway so the first thing we need to think about here is the just the term most valuable. What does most valuable mean? Because value is very subjective, as you can probably imagine. What do we mean by, by that? So for me, I would say that the most, probably the best ways to define most valuable is going to be three in three categories. Most stable, in other words, highly likely to stick around, good job security, good, good support, all of this stuff. Most well paid, in other words, the most amount of money that you can make, just in general, uh, being paid a lot of money for it. And thirdly will be uh, best supplement to your mental toolbox. In other words, the sort of thing that will make you a better programmer. So if we start with job security and just get that out of the way, it's going to be JavaScript, Java and C Sharp. If you go out on the uh, job sites and search, you will find that these are the biggest and most popular programming languages. Python and PHP are fairly high up there as well in certain regions, but these are by far the most stable ones. And this has been true for many, 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 many years. It's uh, the industry love children, basically. And you can also look at the reports for popularity in programming languages, and you will see that these are the sort of, these are the languages, like the, I think it's the top 10 or top five languages in pretty much every report from whatever organization who, do, who does these popularity with programming languages in the industry type of things. These languages, they stay fairly stable. It's kind of like Formula One back in the day. The top three positions are always held by the same people. The only thing that's interesting is what's happening at position 11 or something. And it's a very similar thing here in programming. Anywho, that's number one. So for best paid, it's going to be a little bit of a special one. Uh, last I checked, it was F Sharp, who was one of the most well paid languages out there, just off the bat. You can also make quite a lot of money from COBOL. Uh, and there are a few others as well. But those are the ones that come to mind if I remember my, since I read the report not that long ago. But yeah, for sure, F Sharp will be one of the, if not the most highest paid. But the thing that you need to consider with that as well is that uh, it's, F Sharp is kind of low as well on the availability scale of things. So it's the sort of language that requires you to be a specialist. And this is a video that I've talked about in the past as well, where if you want to make the most amount of money in programming, usually the way, there are a few routes that you can go down. And F Sharp is the specialist route because it's not a very common language, just as COBOL isn't as normal anymore. But there are certain organizations that for some reason can't really migrate from these solutions or they are just consciously deciding that, hey, we're going to stick with this thing, right? And finding people who are experienced in it is almost impossible. So as a, if you are a bit of an entrepreneur or a capitalist programmer, you can actually make a lot more money from just learning these obscure specialized languages 
and go and market yourself to the specific organization. The danger there, on the other hand, is that they have a finite need for this sort of competence. A competency, which means that if somebody else got there before you, it might be hard for you to actually get a job. And then finally, we will talk about like mental toolings, like things that makes you a better programmer. And this is, of course, a highly, highly subjective. It's uh, it's very. I mean, I can throw out things like Lisp, for example. Although Lisp may not have as much relevancy as it just it used to have. But it's things that I personally think will give you a lot of, like, a very good way of thinking just about programming in general. Languages like C for ab absolutely. C and C++ are like, I would say these are core languages to know if you want to really understand how, uh, like, to get a really good understanding of how low, lower levels of programming work. You have other tools that will help you quite a lot with. Uh, like with the mental aspect, how to think about things like Java is an example of such a language and C Sharp in, in, in a sense as well, because like if you want to learn object-oriented programming and how to work in an enterprise environment, it's very hard to find a language that does that better than any of these two. Python is also a very good mental tool type of thing. It has a lot of uh, emphasis on syntactic, uh, synt like it enforces syntax and things of this nature. Um, other languages would be, uh, you will probably not believe me, but I will say PHP or JavaScript, like a scripting language, like, because the thing with Python is that it is not necessary, like, it's not used in the web, in a web context in the same way, it's structured in a different way, although it's a scripting language as well, just something like JavaScript and so forth will, or PHP, I would say JavaScript probably more likely, because it forces you to think about dealing with something like a, like a, how do I put this? You have different run uh, runtime environments for JavaScript, which means that you need to think about not just the code that you are writing, but also the context of where your code is being executed, which forces you to think in a different manner as well. Then you have languages such as, say, Haskell's, the Haskell, that might be, a, it's kind of on the extreme side of functional programming, but it will help you with understanding functional principles very, very well. Uh, Erlang or Elixir, probably Elixir is a nicer experience, <clears throat> is absolutely amazing to make you think about just uh, the execution of a program and how to think about architecture and uh, how to actually structure, uh, how you can actually structure an entire program. It's very useful for that. Scala is also a very, very good language for mental tooling. It's uh, going to give you, well, it, it can be a bit frustrating to learn Scala if you're a beginner because it's so vast and so powerful. But once you once you start understanding it and you start to get kind of get it, it's very very powerful to the point where you will probably learn more about programming practices and architecture and different paradigms from that one language than you will from quite a lot of other languages. So yeah, that's pretty much going to be my answer. So what I want you to take away from this is that although. I now kind of just stuck out my neck and said, hey, these are languages that I think are useful for different reasons. Hopefully you can understand that there are quite a lot of other perspectives on this. If you're really interested in watching somebody with even with quite a few years more of experience than me, go out and search for anything that Scott Vlashin, I hope I, ex I said that right. He is a public speaker. Uh, uh, he has a few... Um, a few videos about everything from different paradigms to functional programming videos and things like that where he just does a presentation on YouTube. He has, uh, he's one of my absolute favorite public speakers. And when we talk about, you know, what's the most valuable programming language, I think we can consider most stable, highest paid and uh, best mental tooling or like the thing that will evolve you the most to be the, <clears throat> the most important categories here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Have a great day.